oxygen sensors guys what do you guys know about oxygen sensors all these cars come with oxygen sensors but what do they really do I'm gonna break it down on this quick video and I'm gonna tell you guys what to look out for when your oxygen sensor is going bad so make sure you guys watch the entire video here guys all right I just pulled out this primary upstream oxygen sensor out of my 2007 Honda Civic LX now these are a oxygen sensor or a O2 sensor and it is somewhat of a wide band there's narrow band sensors that really only read stoichiometric or 14.7 air to fuel ratios these right here are a little bit wider than just the narrow bands because they can read probably close to 11 0.0 to 1 air fuel ratio so that's great and that makes the car run a little bit more efficient but this sensor right here caused a check engine on my vehicle back in the day giving me a PO 172 code which means the car is running rich and looking at my fuel trims I do see that my O2 sensor is telling my ECU to take away about 5 to 8 percent long-term fuel trims from the computer so what happens how can we get a better functioning o2 sensor well a simple answer is this go buy yourself a brand new sensor this is brand new clean this one specifically is a ebay sensor this one is a denso sensor the price difference between this is more than double got this one off ebay for cheap about 32 dollars when the original costs upward of a hundred dollars so i'm curious to run this in my car but that's beside the point we're going to put this one away for now and we're going to be talking about what to look out for in your O2 sensor. Can you clean these sensors? And I'm going to demonstrate me cleaning this sensor. And one piece of the puzzle that not a lot of people I see mention on YouTube, but I'm going to mention it for you guys. All right. So the oxygen sensor actually has two places where it gets readings from. This part is in your pipe, your downpipe, your exhaust, your header, wherever it is in your vehicle depending if it's an NA setup or a turbo setup. And this is reading the amounts of air coming past it once combustion already happened. The other part where it's getting a reading from is these little sample holes right here. It has four of them, and these are sample holes, and it's getting the amount of oxygen that is present in the atmosphere. And by comparing the amount of oxygen present in the atmosphere to the amount of oxygen in the exhaust, it's actually able to calculate the air-fuel ratio efficiently. Now. What happens? How do these sensors go bad? One way is it starts to sample bad O2 readings from this part of the sensor. And as you can see, these things sometimes can get soot on them. If your car is burning a lot of oil, you have oil contamination, and then that's just going to lead to an improper reading of your oxygen molecules in your exhaust. Also, there's other things that can happen. Like right here, you see we got some white discoloration on the sensor. That can mean there is... Uh, ingredients in some additives maybe in your fuel that you're if you're running uh, fuel stabilizers or fuel additives this can cause these sensors to kind of go bad slowly but surely also if you got antifreeze being burned off through the combustion chamber this will cause white uh, deposits on the o2 so you can always pull your o2 sensor out look at the sensor itself to gauge kind of what kind of condition it is in and then the other part, which I'm really going to talk to you about right here, is these little sample holes. And I'm going to put you guys on a macro lens, even more macro than the current one, so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, and again, we have the sensor over here. And you can see the discoloration right over here. The next part I want to show you are the air sample holes right here. And... I kind of messed this sensor up right now when I was taking it out. I had a rubberized glove out. I was taking it out when it was warm and I actually melted the glove. All this is melted glove. But the problem I just caused myself is I contaminated the areas where the air will sample from. As you can see right over there, right over there, contaminated, contaminated. So technically if I put this sensor back in, I bet you my air fuel ratio, my trims will be off a little bit more. But besides the point of me contaminating this damn sensor for this video, which I hope you guys throw a thumbs up for me right now, I'm going to tell you guys how you can clean these sensors 
and essentially you can clean them by spraying brake cleaner, some kind of fast solvent, acetone, mineral spirits, or in this case I'm going to use gasoline, dump it into gasoline and let it kind of soak for a little bit, an hour or two. And also we're going to try to use a air compressor to blow out any kind of contamination on our sample holes right over here. Uh, we're going to have to do a little bit more of TLC for this specific one since we already contaminated it but let me show you guys a new sensor right now and just how clean those sample holes are as you can see right there perfectly clean this is why you want to make sure your o2 sensors are spotless and don't contaminate them with grease or whatnot because then again it's just not going to give you a proper reading so you want to maintain this area very very clean and again this being contaminated can cause your O2 sensor and your O2 readings to be different and not optimal. So this is gets more this gets more involved once you're running boosted applications because this sensor plays a big role when you're under boost and your air fuel ratios need to be spot on so you don't blow so you don't blow your motor. So in this application I have some 87 octane. I'm just going to dump the sensor right in there and let it soak. And a lot of people will say don't try to clean it but uh, this is definitely one way you do this is definitely one way you can try cleaning the sensor if you have a, a ultrasonic wave machine which cleans it ultra by ultrasonic waves that is probably the most optimal way to clean this but I've cleaned this one twice, this is the second time, and there's really nothing coming out of these sensors. I don't know actually how much you'll be able to clean a sensor. Um, probably, again, like everyone says online, the best thing to do is just replace the sensor. Because at the end of the day, all this cleaning you're doing is not doing much for you. So I'm going to let this soak for about 15 minutes before I pull it out. All right, after removing the contaminants from that jar, this is what we come to see. Now, this could possibly be just that uh, rubber glove that I cleaned off from the O2 sensor housing. So, it's no big deal. That's what I really think it is. I don't think it's anything that came off from the actual sensor. I just came back from cleaning this. So, it cleaned up pretty well, guys, as you can see. All the holes look pretty darn clean. We made sure to clean them off pretty darn good. And I'm actually surprised it worked as well as it worked. So, we went to the garage. We took a compressor. We blew air all through in here. We blew air through all in here. We actually took a torch and torched the hell out of this O2 sensor to make sure it's dry and burn off whatever else contaminations there are. As you can see, I'm not a fan of that stuff that you can see right there, the bubbling. You know, it's just a little discolored. Again, about 95,000 miles on this sensor right here. But we're going to we're going to throw it onto the hair dryer right now, give it about 15 minutes drying in the hair dryer, and then it should be ready to go back in the vehicle. And I'm just going to observe my fuel trims again if they get any better, if they get worse always reset your battery guys or your fuel trims when you're reinstalling o2 sensors that way you get a clear understanding from the get-go what the fuel trims are doing and if this doesn't work i'm going to be forced to swap out the new o2 sensor again ebay o2 sensor no name brand i'm curious how this will perform i'm curious how the fuel trims will look like from a sensor that costs way less than the factory Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I hope you appreciate this video. If you found it useful in any shape, way, or form, make sure you smash that like button. Better yet, subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you on the next video, guys. Peace. I ain't here for the money. I ain't here for the fame. Though it might be nice to own a jet plane. I'ma do it all for you. Come along and see it's true. But the world is pretty cold. You might need a sweater too. I'ma put a ride on ya. Get from California. Trying to make it a life. It's cool the next
Sabotage ya Dreams alive